Mr. President, you ought to know that this nation is more a tale of two cities than it is just a shining city on a hill. Maybe, Mr. President, if you visited some more places, maybe if you went to Appalachia where some people still live in sheds, maybe if you went to Lackawanna where thousands of unemployed steel workers wonder why we subsidize foreign steel. Wow. It was the speech of the Democratic National Convention in 1984 that launched Mario Cuomo onto the national stage. The former New York governor passed away yesterday at the age of 82 from heart failure just hours after his son Andrew was sworn in for a second term. So how will he be remembered? With us now is Fox News legal analyst Peter Johnson Jr. He helped elect Mario Cuomo as governor, served as a top aide and as his press officer in his first term. Good morning, Peter. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. Um, you know, it's, it's obviously a sad day for his family and, and, and friends. He'll be remembered as, as a fellow who electrified the Democratic Party, who stood in opposition to Ronald Reagan's statements about a shining city on a hill. He said it was a tale of two cities. And with that speech and another speech, he captured the American imagination. Um, as to what his accomplishments are as governor during three terms, that's up to even more um, debate. Some on the right say, well, taxes were raised. Um, uh, you know, his only real accomplishment legislatively was building prisons. But personally, for me, he allowed a 22-year-old uh, young man to understand the power of government the problems with government, um, and the importance of public service for all Americans. So he gave me an opportunity that I would not have had. Do you remember what was happening there? Yeah, yeah. that was at the, in the Sheraton Hotel. Um, he and I would agree and sometimes uh, disagree. Uh, he could lecture. Uh, he could be difficult. He could also be very friendly uh, and affectionate and, and protective, uh, as, as he was uh, me at certain times. Although sometimes he would um, call me up and remind me that, that I hadn't been elected uh, governor and that he had been elected. <laughs> governor. So I was acting as his press officer uh, at that time and sometimes speechwriter and, and, and had worked on a bunch of his speeches and so he'd remind me that I should really speak to him before making any statements to the press. I want to hear about the speechwriting side because he's yeah. known for some great oratory. Of course, we showed some clips there yeah. from 1984 at the Democratic Convention where he electrified the crowd yeah. there. What was it like to put, well, put he, words he, on paper well, for he, him? He, he, he was a craftsman in terms of words. Uh, he read an awful lot. He was almost kind of a, a Zen governor in some ways. Uh, he he would do yoga. He would stand on his head. Um, I remember during the Sing Sing uprising, which occurred just after um, he, he was elected governor, um, we were there, just a few aides, in the World Trade Center office. And it was a very tense stand, stand down. Seventeen uh, folks at Sing Sing, uh, correction officers, yeah. were being held uh, hostage. Uh, and so he stayed up for two nights, as we all did, to get it done and get them uh, removed safely. And that kind of set him on the path nationally as well. What do you think the loss to Mayor Koch as in the mayor yeah. race played into him becoming governor and then beating Koch? It, it, it was huge. You know, he lost to Ed Koch in a mayoral race when he was a lot more conservative. He became a lot more liberal really? in that gubernatorial race. You know, when he had run for mayor, he had run on the neighborhood preservation party in New York, which had all well, kinds of stigmas yeah. uh, in, in terms of, uh, you know, intergroup relations. He became more a, of a liberal. He beat Ed Koch when everybody thought that Ed Koch would win. So it was a come from behind victory that no one uh, expected. He stayed three terms and eventually beaten by Governor yeah. George Pataki. I'm curious too, his, well, his hesitation to go to the national yeah. stage. He had an opportunity that Bill Clinton was, was going to put him over for the Supreme Court, but he wanted to stay in stir of New Yorkers. He could have also been a running mate for Bill Clinton. In, 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 in some ways, he's an enigmatic, mysterious figure that a lot of people were not able uh, to figure out. Contradictory in many respects. He might be remembered for the things that he didn't do. He had an opportunity to run twice for president. He didn't do it. He had an opportunity, uh, apparently, to be on the United States Supreme Court as an appointee uh, by Bill Clinton to replace Justice Byron White. He didn't do it. I think he wanted to be remembered as the son of an immigrant, as an American who made it against all the odds and wanted to be an inspiration to a lot of Americans who had the same background. Big government guy, uh, didn't actually work out in, in New York State. Uh, taxes went uh, too high. The accomplishments were not as strong as he would have wanted, uh, but he tried really hard. In fact, he told the New York Times yeah. that he wanted that to be his epitaph. 
that he tried, yeah. and he did try. Um, and I'll always be uh, grateful that he was uh, so nice to a young guy and give him an opportunity to do a lot of things, from writing speeches uh, to being a press secretary uh, to hanging out with him around the state, going up and down from uh, Brooklyn uh, to Buffalo. Really wow. incredible experience. And oh, passing thanks. away just minutes after his his son Andrew Cuomo swung in. That is, in for a second that is incredible. Term. That is incredible. Peter Johnson Jr., thank you so much. Good to see you guys.